Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're going to make plantation shutters, and we're going to do it for about a third of what they cost at the local home improvement store. The first step to making your plantation shutters is to take measurements from the window, and then subtract one quarter inch from each dimension. Follow that up by heading over to rockler.com and click on the plantation shutter tool. This tool will create a detailed PDF plan file and cut list. It also provides a detailed order list that you can use to order everything from Rockler if you'd like to do so. Well, I went ahead and ordered from Rockler, and a few days later, a brown box arrived on my front door with all of my goodies inside, saving me a drive to the lumber yard. I received two 1x6 basswood sections for the rails, two 1x2 basswood sections for the styles, a pack of stainless steel nails, louver pens and hinges, a hidden control arm, several pre-routed sections of louvers, and finally, the Rockler shutter system jigs. We'll talk more about that in a minute. We'll want to run all of the sections of wood through the planer and take off about 1 of an inch on both sides. Rockler says this isn't necessary, but the wood I received didn't have a smooth surface, but that's okay, because it only takes just a second. Follow that by marking the boards based on their plan dimensions and cutting them to their final dimensions using a miter saw or a crosscut sled. I used my table saw to rip the styles down to their proper dimensions, but they could just go for a few passes through the planer. Then rip the rails down to their final dimensions as well. The next step requires cutting some rabbits. I did this using a dado stack and a sacrificial fence on the table saw. You could use a router for this job. These rabbits will allow the top and bottom louvers on the shutter to tuck into the shutter frame when the shutter is in the closed position. Once those steps are complete, lay everything out on the table and align all of the boards. I like to label each board at this point to make sure they don't get mixed up. My joinery of choice for shutters is dowels, so I lined up and marked all the edges to be drilled. These lines mark where to drill the holes using my doweling jig. The doweling jig makes it super easy to drill the holes. Just line up these little markers with your pencil and tighten to clamp it in place. It works on the sides of the boards and the ends exactly the same. I like to dry fit the pieces together and place the shutter in the window, checking to make sure that all of the right clearances are in place. Correcting mistakes after this point will be much harder. Now, go ahead and do a quick sanding to smooth everything out and remove any marks from the previous steps. You'll want to use a shutter cutter router bit to add the decorative edges on the styles. You can pick this bit up from Rockler or from any home improvement center. Follow that by adding a 45 degree chamfer on all of the rails. This is really optional, but I like to add a roundover on the rabbits we cut earlier. This provides a nice clean look when the shutters are closed. Now it's time to drill all of the louver pin holes in the styles, and that's where the shutter jig makes all of the difference. Place the styles face to face and then clamp the shutter jig in the middle of them. Then, all that's required is to drill the holes using the self-centering drill bit provided in the kit. When you run out of holes in the jig, you just slide it down and use these quarter inch pins to realign it quickly. That's it, and you're back to drilling. Using my crosscut sled on a stop block set to the right length, I cut all the louvers down to size. Using this method makes it easy to make repeated cuts of the exact same length. Once that's done, we need to move the stop block by 1 8 inch and then cut notches in the louvers to accept the hidden control arms. The shutter system comes with a jig for drilling the ends of the louvers. You'll need a center hole on each side and one side needs a control arm hole. Each louver then receives a shutter pin on each end. One louver receives a special tensioning pin that comes in the pin packs. Now it's time to start the glue up. This is a process that you can't really stop once you start, so make sure you've got everything ready. It's a somewhat complicated and rushed process. The more louvers, the more time you need. I find it easier to only insert everything one end at a time and then slowly compress the joints as I go. This is sped up about 8x to give you an idea. At this point, it is critical to make sure everything is square and lined up. It will be impossible to fix this after the glue dries. I like to tighten the clamps, loosen them, and then retighten them again. And once you're done, it should look like this. You'll want to let them sit overnight in the clamps before moving on. The next step is paint. I use my HVLP sprayer and our trim color to paint the shutter, but you can certainly paint them with a brush if you don't have a sprayer. 
Once the paint dries, it's time to install the hinges. I installed them 3 inches from each end. Basswood is a stringy wood, so be sure to drill slow and not to over tighten your screws. Take the hidden control arm and cut it to the proper length, in my case 12 louvers. Then use the stainless steel nails provided to attach it to each louver. The hidden control arm makes for a really clean look and allows the movement of one louver to move all of the louvers. And all that's left to do is to screw the shutter into the window frame. I use magnetic clips to keep my shutters closed. I like this because it provides a very clean look and a simple operation, but you can also use pens or latches if you prefer. The magnets just attach to the top and bottom of the window frame. And that's it! You've just built and installed your very own plantation shutters. And minus my time, it cost me approximately one-third what our local home improvement store quoted. Saving money and gaining bragging rights. Now that's what I call a win-win. Well, hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I have built several shutters around the house. This one here is one in the master suite, and it's about three or four times bigger than the one that you saw in the video. A couple of things that I want to talk about though before you go. The first one is, I decided to use what's called a hidden control arm system. And I don't know if you've seen on older shutters where there's a bar in the middle that you move up and down. Well these don't have that. They simply open and close just by moving any one of the shutters, uh, or the louvers I mean. And uh, to me that just, it's a cleaner look, a more modern look, and, and I really like it. I picked that for my particular installation. The second thing I want to talk to you about is this Rockler shutter system that I used. It's part of their Jigit series, and um, I highly recommend this. This takes a lot of the work out of building these shutters. So it adds the ability to drill these holes very precisely and very quickly um, for all of the different holes in the shutter that you have to drill. Now you certainly could do these shutters without this Jigit, uh, Jigit system. But let me tell you, it would be a lot harder. You'd have to do a lot of measuring and a lot of intricate detail work. And um, I just quite honestly don't have the patience for that. So um, anyway, I highly recommend that you get one of these if you're going to build shutters um, yourself. Um, and Rockler did not sponsor this video. Thanks for watching. Well, hey, thanks for watching. And if you haven't done so yet, head over to facebook.com slash thegeekpub and hit that like button. And if you don't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're here.